Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth video of the Gloom series where we are developing an entire game using TypeScript. So this time around we're actually going to be adding a couple more things to our engine core uh, and then adding some utilities and rendering out some geometry so we can actually see something on the screen. But before we do that there's one minor adjustment that I want to make. I've been using up to this point Webpack Dev Server and Webpack Dev Server is is pretty nice, uh, but it's a little heavy for what I actually want to accomplish because it tries to rebuild the project every single time uh, it detects a change. And I don't necessarily need that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to switch to something called Live Server, which does have live reloading, but it's a lot lighter. So first I'll start by executing npm uninstall webpack dev server. And I'll npm install live server double dash save dev. And of course that means that we'll need to change our server that actually runs. So we'll be replacing our server with this line of code, which is node modules, live server, live server JS. So now if we npm run server, we can see how much faster that starts up. And then of course, if we F5, we still get our window popping up as normal. Now that that's out of the way, so in our engine class, we're going to create a couple of temporary variables just to get things up and running. We'll be moving around some of this stuff later on, but for now, we'll create a private camera, which is of type perspective camera. And this is actually a perspective camera provided by three, which is why I say this is temporary because eventually we'll want to wrap this in our own object. And we'll also create a new scene object, which is also provided by three. The renderer needs both of these things to actually function. so. We'll need to create them here, and like I said, we'll be moving them around eventually. Just for good measure, I'll go ahead and throw a to-do in there as well, so I don't lose track of it. So in start, right before the loop, we'll set this dot camera to new perspective camera. We'll have an FOV of 45 degrees. We'll pass it this aspect ratio. We'll have a near clipping plane of 0.1 and a far clipping plane of 1,000. We'll also set the position of the camera to be 10 on the z-axis so that it gets moved back uh, a little bit so we can actually see our geometry that we're going to be adding in a little bit. We'll also add a quick to-do here to move this. So we'll also want to create a new scene. Uh, and this scene will be used to hold all of our objects. Of course, we'll be abstracting this later on into a, uh, a level that we can use um, instead of using the raw uh, three scene object. But for now, just to get things running, this will do fine. Okay, so in the renderer, we need to set things up to actually accept these two when we go to render something. So, so we'll create a public render method. It'll take in the date time as the update method does. We may not need this, but just for good measure, we'll include it anyways. It'll also take in a scene to be rendered and a camera to render the scene with. From there, we simply call this internal dot render. We pass it scene and camera, and that's all there is to it. Back in engine, we have our update loop here. After renderer update, we'll call renderer.render. .render. Pass it dt, this.scene, and this.camera. It's build, and as you can see, it looks exactly the same as it did before. So in order to actually sort of prove that things are working, let's go ahead and add some geometry. So after we create our new scene, we'll create some test geometry. So what we'll need to do is we'll create some new plane geometry, which is another type that 3 provides. We'll pass it a width of 1, a height of 1, one segment for width and one segment for height. Now, I believe these default all to one, but I prefer to be explicit. We also want to create a new material, and we'll use mesh basic material, which is provided by three. And to it, we'll pass a configuration object. And for now, we'll just set the color to, let's go with FF6600, which should give us a orange color. And finally, we can create a mesh, passing it the geometry and the material. And this mesh then gets added to the scene. And that's how we add objects to the scene. Now, obviously, we're going to be adding much more advanced things than just a plane. But for now, let's go ahead and build and check it out and run. And you can see here that we have our plane geometry created. It's kind of small at the moment, but you can see if we resize the window, everything resizes and keeps its aspect ratio as we would expect. It's small at the moment because we set our camera to 10. So it's 10 units away from this plane. So just to prove this concept a little bit. We'll change this to two and build. And when we run this time around, we'll see that it's a lot bigger because we're actually closer to the plane object. 
So now that we have some geometry rendering, we know that everything is hooked up as it should be, uh, we can actually crack on with some game development. But before we do that, there is one more thing that I want to create that we're going to want to use extensively later on, and I sort of want to get it out of the way now. So under core, we'll want to add a new file, and we're going to call this utilities, and we're going to export a class called utilities. And to this, we're going to want to create a public static method called exists that takes any sort of object. And what this is going to allow us to do is quickly check to see if an object exists or if it's undefined or null. And so we simply return whether the object is not undefined and not null or not. And so this prevents us from having to do this verbose check uh, against both of these potentially anywhere throughout the code. And we don't have to keep track of whether we're checking against undefined or checking against null. We can just say, hey, utilities that exists, true or false. And that's pretty much all we wanna add uh, to this for right now. We're gonna be adding a lot more uh, methods and functionality to this utilities class, but I wanted to go ahead and, and scaffold this and get it stood up for now. So let's look at our readme file. So the engine core, the camera and the scene for now are done. So we can actually take those and move them down here. Those are complete. And we've also added some utilities and rendered some geometry. So we'll move those there. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep this video short. And next time we're going to tackle some basic keyboard input. And that will allow us to move around the camera a little bit so that we actually have some interactivity with the window. So on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.